ಆದ್ವಿತೀಯ ಟೂ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಎಂ ಬಿ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ಬೇಕಕ್ಕೆ ಶ್ರೀಲಂಕಾವೇ ವೇಗವತ್ಮಸ ಪುಲೋಲ್ತಮ ಹೋಮ್ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ಬ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸಂಬಂಧ ತಾವೇವನ ಎಸ್ ಎಲ್ ಟಿ ಮೊಬಿಟೆಲ್ ದೇಶ ಫೈವ್ ಬಲವೇಗೆ ಒಬ್ಬತ್ ಅದು ಆತ್ವಿದಿನ್ನ on first at 9 this monday the 26th of june 2023 depth of debt president ranil wickremesinghe says that the debt restructuring strategy will be passed in parliament this week hopefully by sunday or monday the final document will be available to us says working with other countries is not selling off the country we are working with the uh, foreign economies not only western but also eastern like japan korea china and working with them does not mean we are selling off the country it means that we are developing the economy no haircuts the government will not consider financial haircuts during domestic debt restructuring says the state minister of finance thai trade terms Sri Lanka commences the fifth round of free trade agreement negotiations with Thailand. Gas literal gas to reduce prices of domestic LP gas for a fourth consecutive time during the first week of July. Alliance Finance Mitru Ranai Sevave run pump kata propel 1 lakh 70 thousand ka ila tikarwa. Obe vishwase dinu sensorine then lagamati pharmacy in labata hacker. This is Other Verona First at 9 live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at 9. I'm Shanella Fernando in your top stories for tonight. President Ranil Wickremesinghe says the debt restructuring program will be presented to the cabinet on Wednesday and will be presented to the parliament and before the Committee on Public Finance on Friday. During an interview with French Channel France 24, the head of state confirmed that the program will be debated in parliament on Sunday and will be approved by parliament. Further President Wickremesinghe has said working with foreign economies does not necessarily mean that the government is selling off the country. And there are reports by the Reuters news agency that the World Bank is about to approve 700 million dollars in budgetary and welfare support at its next board meeting. Can you confirm that this is indeed happening we are anticipating money from the world bank so far we have fulfilled all the benchmarks and therefore we are qualifying for the assistance from the world bank it's a much needed money at the moment and will certainly help to strengthen the economy the issue of your debt is extremely important because you need financial oxygen obviously uh, your debt external debt stands at 42 billion dollars i i believe are you making progress with the different creditors there's the paris group there's china discussions are going on with the different groups we've used we have a agreement with lazard to represent us and the debt restructuring program will be presented to cabinet on Wednesday I think the whole weekend they're hoping to finalize it it will go to parliament on Friday before the public finance committee then Saturday and Sunday it will be debated in parliament and will will be approved by parliament thereafter we can start the rest of the negotiations with our creditors what's in this plan i mean how, what's the idea to postpone the debt to reduce it a combination of both well it's a question of uh, giving a longer period for repayment and we've also been looking at some form of a reduction in the amount due so those have been discussed now and hopefully by sunday or monday the final document will be available to us you recently declared uh, some groups involved in traditional politics are actively working to hinder our economic revival they're spreading false information and misleading the public with claims that we're selling off the country what exactly do you have in mind <coughs> no there have been people who say we've been selling off the country who are these people uh, Mr. Part, part of the opposition or right. part of the groups so i the i just pointed out each achievement we had and i asked is that uh, selling off the country if we reduce the price of 
poor is it selling off the country? We are working with uh, foreign economies, not only Western, but also Eastern, like Japan, Korea, China. And working with them does not mean we are selling off the country. It means that we are developing the economy, and I asked them to reply. It's just a sort of a debate that goes on in Sri Lanka politics. They have not been able to reply. So I think they have, they have other issues also we have asked them. What I'm telling you, what I've told all the parties, we are in a very difficult situation now. Let's all get together and look at how we resolve it. And then when you all go to the elections, next time you all can say we've all been stakeholders in this development. But if you all keep criticizing in the old way without any other reasonable alternative, the fact is that the voters will turn you out. So it's much better for us to start a new political culture where we can all work together. A special cabinet meeting has been convened on Wednesday to discuss the domestic debt restructuring process. Commenting on the domestic debt restructuring, State Minister of Finance Ranjit Simbalapitiya says that the government will not plan on discussing any financial haircuts during this process. He said that the domestic debt restructuring process will focus on postponing debt repayment, extending the debt repayment period and reducing interest rates. While negotiations are underway with the bilateral creditors on restructuring foreign debt, the Sri Lankan government is now planning to restructure local debt in a bid to re-establish debt sustainability. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, this process also aims for manageable levels of gross financing needs, manageable levels of debt services denominated in domestic and foreign currency, and a decline in debt to gross domestic product ratio to manageable levels in the medium to long run. To discuss the domestic debt restructuring process, a special cabinet meeting will be held on Wednesday under the patronage of President Ranil Vikramasinghe. Addressing the media yesterday, Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe said that the parliament is expected to adopt the debt optimization strategy this week. He also said that 30th of June was announced a special banking holiday to create a sufficient number of days for domestic debt optimization strategy. So the main reason for this 30th of holiday, bank holiday announcement was to create a sufficient number of days for domestic debt optimization strategy that has been discussing with the central bank and the Minister of Finance. This domestic debt optimization strategy would not anyway have an adverse impact on bank deposits. There will be no reduction in bank deposits that people are having with commercial banks and non-bank institutions. There will be no reduction in interest rates that they are right now contracted and enjoying that they are getting in terms of their contracts and fixed deposits or any other deposits. Banks, if they are given, agreed to given some interest rates, this will continue to be received for public deposits and deposit holders. Deposit holders will not be affected adversely. It will have no in adverse impact on bank system stability. State Minister of Finance Ranjit Simbalapidi says local debt restructuring will be implemented for 41 billion US dollars worth of domestic debt. It includes 25 billion US dollars worth of treasury bonds, 11 billion US dollars worth of treasury bills and 5.6 billion US dollars worth of development bonds. Speaking at Adha Dirana's Big Focus program, CMLRPD also explained how domestic debt restructuring will take place. Delivering a special statement in Parliament in April, President Ranil Vikramasinghe also assured that none of the employees' provident fund beneficiaries will be affected from the domestic debt restructuring process. Chairman of the Committee on Public Finance, Dr. Harsha De Silva, says that the Central Bank and the Ministry of Finance are yet to present a plan pertaining to the domestic debt restructuring process. Speaking to the media after participating in a meeting attended by opposition member parliamentarians, Dr. Harsha De Silva went on to say that the process needs to be executed without causing any negative impact to the public. Political parties representing the opposition met this morning in Parliament under the patronage of opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. Addressing the media following the meeting, 
Chairman of the Committee on Public Finance and Parliamentarian of the Samagi Janabalavege, Dr. Harsha De Silva, expressed his views pertaining to the domestic debt restructuring. Heta fraksanaik yang ke rasmi mati bila senosura ada irda parlimen tu eh hambela make sakaccha kerana vivada kerana suda ana mak tamai khalin ti bu ne. Dan eh unada me fraksanaik rasmi mas sikura ada kal dah lah tienno. Mandar ne mukadde wenne ane kiala. Namu visi ata weni da cabinet teka kata kerala desi ana pratiho kata kiri me wede pilih wale ekengga wela parlimen tu mudal karga sabah wede berhas pedin da sikura ada yomu kerana tamai plan ne khalin ti bu ne mandar ne ting kohmu wedi kiala. आपी हारी है तो मत तेरुंगा नॉन है कोचरा दुरटा सामान जानता आवटा में का बालपान वाला नेत्र गिये ने का दें ट्रिलियन है दाह हतरा कर वितर प्रमाणे एक अट देशीय नाया राज्य आरके नहीं है नो बांडा का र बिल पत्तों डीम ट्रिलियन है पहाक वितर सहा इरतोड़ा पोड़ा वैडी प्रमाण है बांडा का र बैंड बैंक वो ताम इतनी पात कर लतने मुकाद्दे वैद्य पीली वाले की गला बांडा का रे इतनी पात कर लतने शहान से मसिंग हला रांजित सिंह बला पीटी हला दिगिन दिकटे में कुआं में का कराने नए की गला इतना लोगों परास पर आती है ना चानता वट्टा बालपैम मार इल्ल नोए ने विधि रे में का कराना है कि आवाज ती है ना क्योंने do not cross line ने का ती है ना मैं do not cross line ने का cross कराने बे है बे इधर हम प्रास ने दिए ने तानता व मूला की री मार निमे इधर में कराने विपक्ष ने आया कि तुम्हारा तुम्हारा जनादिवसी � एक आमादी ने हर तो विपक्ष ने आया कि तुम्हारे सामग्र मेक एक अंगता आवे का टेन ना जनादिपति तुम्हारे पुलुआंग में इंडे पे मम्म जनादिपति तुम्हारे क्या आने ओ बट तुम्हारे कारण कल ला पड़ना मेक मीटर वाला पुलुल लो बालन the fifth round of negotiations of the Sri Lanka-Thailand Free Trade Agreement commenced in Colombo. During the opening session, Sri Lanka's chief negotiator of free trade agreements expressed his satisfaction with the progress of the FTA discussions, which are proceeding according to the agreed-upon timeline. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka is also expected to seek Thailand's support in joining the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. The fifth round of Sri Lanka-Thailand free trade agreement negotiations commenced in Colombo this morning. According to the President's Media Division, the negotiations are aligned with President Ranil Vikramasinghe's vision of strengthening economic ties with major and emerging economies with a particular focus on Asian countries. During the opening session, Sri Lanka's chief negotiator of free trade agreements, K.J. Veerasinghe, emphasized the Sri Lankan government's objective of integrating into the global economy. Veerasinghe also expressed his satisfaction with the progress of the FTA discussions, which are proceeding according to the agreed-upon timeline. The President's media division said that the next round of negotiations of the FTA are scheduled to convene in Thailand from the 21st to 23rd of August this year. Further, three additional rounds are planned to conclude the agreement by February 2024, with the signing expected to occur in March 2024. Sri Lanka aims to expand its economic reach within South Asia in the first phase and expand further eastward to become a part of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Sri Lanka will formally request the member countries of RCEP to support its application. Given Thailand's active participation in both Asian and RCEP, Sri Lanka is expected to seek Thailand's support in joining RCEP. Prices of drugs belonging to 60 categories were reduced by 16% with effect from today. A gazette was published by the Minister of Health Kehelia Rambukwala on the 15th of June in connection to the price reduction of scheduled medicines. Accordingly, manufacturer or importers, manufacturers rather, or importers who sell any of the scheduled medicines are to reduce prices proportionately by 16%. As per the Gazette which was published by the Minister of Health Kehle Rambukwella on the 15th of June, prices of drugs will be reduced with effect from today. The drug prices which fall under 60 categories including paracetamol and thyroxine are to be reduced by 16% with effect from today. The Gazette published by the Minister says a manufacturer or importer who sells any of the scheduled medicines at a maximum retail price shall not sell such drugs at a price more than the retail price. The Extraordinary Gazette noted that a manufacturer or importer who sells any scheduled medicine at a revised retail price which is less than the maximum retail price must reduce prices proportionately by 16%. 
Further, every trader, distributor, pharmacist, medical practitioner, dentist, veterinary surgeon, medical institution, which includes private medical institutions, pharmacy, or person who or which is in possession of the scheduled medicines for the purpose of sale shall maintain the price of the scheduled medicines at the maximum retail price or revised retail price, whichever is less. State gas supplier Litro Gas Lanka has decided to slash the prices of its domestic LP gas cylinders next month. According to officials, the new price reduction, which is the fourth consecutive this year, will come into effect during the first week of July. Chairman of Litro Gas, Modita Pires, confirmed that the downward price revision is due to the price fluctuations in the global market. He added that the price revision is aimed at providing benefits to the general public. The Litro chairman further assured that adequate amounts of domestic LP gas stocks are available in the country. We'll be back after this short commercial break. Kodamata Pirali Karana Balapuru Ankarya Mahindra Juvo Timo Vitin Vedamago Dai Kodamatamai Swaraj Tractor Timo Vitin Abbas Milaganan Devantalisa Dukala TV, fridge, AC, washing machine, laptop, junk Muturkatana Mulutangi Upakarna Ethel Nishpa the Norasak, Adu Mobilita, Abbas within Pamanai. A three way Tahurukala Vishishatwe, Dushant Mahabadugi, Charita Disanai, Samitrat Naik, Sissiji Nugegoda Kampaha. Physics, Nilanta Jai Surya, Navapanti Harambaya, Susi Pun Kampaha, Ceiling Pen Nugegoda, Science Center Gala. Bahanur Kurnagal Kaka, Lanka K, Bautuka with the Apartamala, Nugegoda, the Atikramanikalavaga, Physics, Darshana Okuila, Taniva Yana Kamanata, Niverati Gimu. Hemal Pereira. Welcome back in more news. The Sri Lanka College of Psychiatrists states that Sri Lanka's mental health sector is facing challenges due to several issues, including the lack of mental health professionals in the country. While addressing the 20th Academy session of the Sri Lanka College of Psychiatrists, its president, Dr. Kapila Ranasinghe, has said better collaboration is essential among stakeholders, providing mental health care to serv services rather to ensure comprehensive care for mental health issues of individuals. The inauguration ceremony of the 20th Academy Session of the Sri Lanka College of Psychiatrists was held recently in Colombo under the patronage of Minister of Health Kehli Rambukwella. The draft of the new Mental Health Act is currently being reviewed by the Minister of Health for approval. I'm sure the Honourable Minister will look into that and make sure that it gets approved very soon. This act will serve as a cornerstone for the protection and promotion of mental health rights in Sri Lanka, ensuring that our citizens receive the care and support they receive. There is still much to be done in the realm of psychiatry and mental health services. The mental health sector in Sri Lanka faces challenges in terms of limited resources and infrastructure. There is a shortage of mental health professionals, including psychiatrists, psychologists and psychiatric nurses, particularly in rural areas. This scarcity makes it difficult to provide timely and accessible mental health services to all those in need. Mental health services in Sri Lanka are still fragmented and not well, well integrated as a comprehensive mental health care system. There is a need for better coordination and collaboration between the mental health services and other health care providers to ensure comprehensive care for individuals with mental health issues. Community-based mental health services such as community treatment, Teams and support groups are crucial for providing ongoing care and support to mentally ill in a cost-effective manner. However, such services are limited or virtually non-existent in Sri Lanka, particularly in rural, rural areas. Meanwhile, 7 to 80 percent of money allocated to mental health in Sri Lanka is diverted to hospital-based care with very low cost-effectiveness. So, a strengthening the community-based treatment approaches is essential for long-term management and recovery of individuals with mental health condition. Sri Lanka must find a sustainable solution to these major issues in health, health services by working together with all the stakeholders. In business news, China Harbour Engineering Corporation says they will invest 1.2 billion US dollars on the Colombo port city. This was conveyed by the president of China Harbour Engineering Corporation to Foreign Minister Ali Sabri at a meeting held during his visit to China to address the World Economic Forum. Meanwhile, the foreign minister also held discussions with chairman of the Exim Bank of China. 
Discussions focused on the way forward with Sri Lanka's ongoing debt restructuring process. The Exim Bank chairman has assured their support towards Sri Lanka's economic recovery and growth. The Colombo Bose closed green as a result of price gains in counters such as Commercial Bank and John Keel's Holdings. The CSC Old Share Price Index climbed 1.2% to end at 9,434.26 points, rising for a fourth straight session. Trading volumes rose to 90.4 million shares from 56.5 million shares in the previous session. Meanwhile, the S&P SL20 rose by 1.54% to close at 2,714.86. The equity market's turnover rose to 2.23 billion rupees from 1.16 billion rupees in the previous session. The banking sector was the top contributor to the market turnover, while the capital goods sector was the second highest contributor. Foreign investors were net buyers in the equity market, purchasing shares worth 136.2 million rupees, while domestic investors were net sellers of loading shares worth 2.19 billion rupees. Now let's have a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. Oil prices steadied slightly on Monday with political instability from an aborted revolt by Russian mercenaries over the weekend, viewed by the market as not posing an immediate threat to oil supply from one of the world's largest producers. Brent crude futures were up 47 cents to close at $74.32 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude gained 36 cents to end at $69.52. Both benchmarks gained as much as 1.3% in early Asian trade. A clash between Moscow and Russian mercenary group Wagner was averted on Saturday after the heavily armed mercenaries withdrew from the southern Russian city of rostov on don following an agreement that halted their rapid advance on the capital. However, the challenge has raised questions about President Vladimir Putin's grip on power and some concern about possible disruption of oil supply. Both Brent and WTI prices fell by about 3.6% last week on worries that further interest rate hikes by the US Federal Reserve could sap oil demand at a time when China's economic recovery has also disappointed investors. In an early indicator of future US supply, the number of oil and natural gas rigs operated by US energy companies fell for an eighth week in a row for the first time since July 2020. With that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Thank you for joining. I'm Shinala Fernando. Have a good night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhaderna.lk.